Good evening, good evening, Sishoro Community Church. This is another wonderful day, a great day to study God's Word together on Bible Study Tuesdays. And we are going to read God's Word together. Those of you who were with us, I'll start by introducing the background where we're coming from before we start looking into the very last portion of the book of James. We were going through the book of James in the last couple of weeks. This is actually week number 13 that we were looking into the book of James. Let's just open with a word of prayer before we read. Uh, please turn your Bibles to James chapter 5. Please look at verse 13 to verse 20. That's what we are going to focus on. Open your Bibles in James chapter 5 from verse 13 until verse 20. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you for this great opportunity to study your word together as your children. Help us, Lord, to study and to understand the concepts that you are teaching us in this session today. And we thank you for your grace to lead us into this session. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, we are going to look at James chapter 5 from verse 13 until verse 20. Let's look at it together. It says there, if anyone among you is anyone among you suffering, let him pray. One. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Verse 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven verse 16 therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed because the prayer of the righteous person has great power as it is working. Verse 17. Elijah was a man with nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain. And the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. That is the reading of God's word, and we already prayed. Now, there are three things I want us to look at about prayer. The main topic is prayer in the final session of this epistle, which is paramount. Let's do an overview. In chapter 1, we notice that the problem with the church that has scattered because of persecution from Jerusalem where James was the leading pastor there, or the prominent pastor there. We noticed that the problem with the church there, they were under persecution, they were suffering. Number two, in chapter two, we realized that they had a problem with uh, the tongue, chapter two and three, the tongue, and the way they responded to scripture. 
they had a problem with favoritism in chapter 2. In chapter 3, they had a problem with the tongue, the way they used the tongue. And then in chapter 4, last week, we ended, when we looked at it, I mean, the week before last, we noticed the issue of faith the, and the wisdom, the issue of wisdom. But today, we're going to look at prayer. This sums up all the problems that we looked at in the book of James. But, by the way, don't get astray, uh, don't get confused, because the book of James deals with a professing believer who professes faith but has no action. And then it also deals with the believer that has true faith. So there's two kinds of faith that are being dealt with in the whole epistle of James. So these are tests, if you will, or there are verifications to confirm a person's faith. Now, there are three things we're going to look at and then we close this whole session. Number one, prayer in suffering. Those that are those three groups that must make sure they pray always. And we are always in one of these groups. You are either suffering, you are, and those that are suffering are compared to those that are joyful. Suffering and joyful. In good times and in bad times. That's group number one. And in group number two, there are those that are sick. Those that are sick. Sick in faith, I mean in, in the spiritual realm, and then sick physically. Two kinds of sickness. They must pray, always. And then, finally, the last group is those that are wanderers from the truth. Those that are getting lost. Those that are being led astray, either by them, themselves, their own desires, or by false teaching, false doctrine. Doctrinal, so this is apostasy and those that are being deceived by others. Let's look at them. In verse 13, 14, we're going to see, in verse 13, we're going to see that he starts by asking, is anyone among you? That is, remember, this letter is in the church. So is anyone among you suffering? If you are suffering in any way, in any shape or form, if you are suffering in any way, question is, are you, where do you turn? Where do you find your comfort? Do you find your comfort in other things other than in prayer? That is the test of faith. Test of genuine faith. Genuine believers, when they are going through suffering, their default comfort going position would be to pray. Number two, is anyone, if you're not suffering, then which means things are going well for you. Now, if things are going well for you, question is, do you, is it your, your natural inclination to then give thanks in praise? This is still prayer. Are you giving thanks in prayer to God? Remember, for believers, prayer is not only when you want something from God, but prayer, Jesus said it about prayer in Luke chapter 22. Actually, not only Luke, because he mentioned it in a couple of verses there. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, in Luke chapter 22, verse 46, in Mark chapter 14, verse 38. Now, Jesus has said there that you must watch and pray so that you may not fall into temptation, so that you may not enter into temptation. That is the importance of prayer to a believer. It is so paramount that when you pray, you know 
that you are running away from temptation. You are arming yourselves against temptation. It's not only to get what you want. So that is the importance of prayer. And we see that in verse 13. Twofold. A believer who is suffering will pray. A believer whose things are going well, who is cheerful and joyful, will still pray and give thanks and praise to God. Let's continue. Verse 14 and verse 15. Listen to the second group. The second group is those that are sick. But this goes beyond that. It's 14, 15, and 16. Listen to it carefully. It says there, is anyone among you sick? If you're sick, whether spiritually, meaning you are addicted to a certain sin that you are not able to get rid of. That's a sickness, a spiritual sickness. Then it says, call the elders of the church. What are they supposed to do? Remember, elders of the church, their function is to watch over the souls of those that are in the particular church. They are the under shepherds that are looking, that God has entrusted the souls of those that are there. So, when you are humble, even when you're sick normally, because pride doesn't want to ask for assistance. Pride doesn't want to ask for too sure. So let's be careful of that. That's number one. Number two, those that are physically sick also must call those that are watching over their souls, those, those that are watching over their spirits, spiritual life, the, those that exemplify spiritual life and their leaders, and God has planted them there in that local assembly. And then, listen to what it says as it continues there. And let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. This is the ceremonial healing that used to be practiced from Leviticus chapter 14, verse Leviticus chapter 14. Um, when you look at it from verse, who is that? Yeah, that is Leviticus chapter 14. That is where the different ceremonial processes were being enacted by God. And he's teaching that in there we have to practice that. But remember, this is ceremonial. It's not normative. It is not what we all believers must practice. It has been taken out of proportion in our generation where people make money out of this. And that is totally ungodly, is wicked, and should not be promoted. Let's continue. Here's why we need to involve the church in our prayer requests. This is why. Number one, verse 15. Because of the prayer of faith saves the one who's sick. Not salvation as in eternal salvation, but salvation in the sense of encouraging and healing and recovering both the person who's sick spiritually and the person who is sick physically. So, let us watch over that. Okay? Prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. 
and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. We all know it is only God in heaven who can forgive sins. He's the only one who can for forgive sins, right? If that is the case, the context of this does not mean elders who are praying for the person must forgive them, which is what the Catholic Church unfortunately practices, where it says the Father, you confess to the Father and then the Father declares forgiveness to you. No, we, that is misinterpretation of Scripture. It is misapplication, which is unfortunate. However, what it teaches is if you are contrite and you have a broken heart, you will be willing to confess your sins to others, especially those that are sick spiritually, those that are addicted to a particular sin. They are more than willing to confess that sin to somebody else. Meaning they are open also for encouragement and for the word of advice, for wise counsel, counseling. And that's the duty of the elders. That's what they do. That's their job. Right. Look at verse 16. I already touched on it. Remember, we're still on the second group of the people that need to pray. It's those that are sick physically and those that are sick spiritually. Two ways. Verse 16 says, Therefore, which means because of the prayer, verse 15, because of the prayer of faith saves the one who's sick from their sickness, from their inability to repent from a certain sin, or from their physical ailments. That prayer can prayer of faith can save that person from that infirmity or from that sickness, right? Therefore, because of that, then confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed physically, so that you may be healed also spiritually. Why? The last sentence of verse 16 says, The prayer of a righteous person has great power and accomplishes much, and it is working. The ESV says, The prayer of the righteous person is working. So we need one another, Bazalwan. We need one another, Bahena. Believers, we need each other. We need to pray for one another. We need to be willing to be open to one another. So verse 16 emphasizes the fact that we need to be open to one another. We need to be honest with one another. We need to confide in one another. We need to fellowship with one another. Genuine fellowship. Not fellowship by just singing and quoting verses to each other only, but actually getting to know each other being open to one another and praying for each other. Not all raw serve about one another. But remember, we went through this as we went through the one another's of the New Testament. And then verse 17 and 18 goes further in exemplifying that prayer of a righteous person or a godly person. What kind of prayer is that? Listen to verse 17 and 18. Elijah was a man like one of us. And he prayed fervently. Do you see that? Underline fervently. He prayed passionately. He prayed earnestly, without ceasing. Honestly. He petitioned with God. And he prayed that it, may, it might not rain for three years and six months. For three years and six months. This was also mentioned in Luke chapter 4 verse 25. He prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months. 
And yes, it did not. And he prayed again in verse 18. He prayed again after three years and six months, which is 18 months. No, no, 36 months plus six. He prayed again and heaven gave rain and the earth bore its fruit. That's exhibit A of how powerful, how practical, and how effective the prayer of your fellow believers next to you. In the WhatsApp group, the fellow believers that are there, their prayer is that powerful because they are godly and God listens to prayer of righteous people. Just like he did Elijah, who was just like one of us. Now, let's look at finally the last group. The last group is those that are wanderers, that must pray. Remember, the first group is those that are suffering. And then there's the opposite, the suffering and the joyful. They must pray, both of them. Those that are suffering must pray. And those that are to find comfort in the Lord to confine in him, and then two, those that are not suffering and things are going well, they need to pray and give thanks and praise to God. And then group number two is those that are sick physically and those that are sick spiritually. Sick spiritually meaning those that are finding it difficult to stop a certain sin. That's a sickness because CV is sickness. So they need to pray. For God to heal them. So the physically sick must also do the same. Call for elders, those who watch over the flock of the Lord, the under shepherds. Now, the final group is the wanderers of from the truth. Those who are wandering away from the truth, the 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 the, the apostate apost those that are apostatizing from the truth. Bautimela. And Bautimela are broken into two as well. Those that are being deceived and those that are wandering away from the truth. Karpakala false doctrine or doctrines of demons. Now, let's look at the first group. For, uh, the second group. The first and the second group of those that are wanderers. In verse 19a, it says there, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, verse 20a, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering, which was in verse 19, will save his soul from eternal separation from God. That is the definition of death in this context. So, not only that, but will also cover a multitude of sins. And this can only be done because of Prayer, fellowship, and being honest, open, and contrite, humble, to open up to fellow believers about your spiritual situation. We have to do this. Let's start doing this to our, with our brothers with our siblings at home, our sisters at home. Let's be honest with them. Let's be honest with our wives, our husbands at home. Be open with them. Be humble. Seek help. Seek wise counsel. And remember, don't wake up without praying. Because that is the bread and butter. 
of a Christian. If you don't do this, you will fall into temptation. You will be a wanderer. And you'll wander away from the truth. Let me go back to verse 19 and 20 and let me show you these two things that I, showed, I, I spoke about. The wanderers from the truth are those that are being deceived. Those that are being deceived is, are in verse 19. Is those that you can bring back. In verse 19, it's, um, in verse 20, sorry, it says a sinner. Now, a sinner is the ones that have wandered completely, willingly. Those that are teaching others to wander away from the truth. That is doctrinal error. I wish I had more time to explore this, to go deeper into explaining and showing examples, even in the New Testament, of those who were wanderers from the truth and were even regarded sinners after having exposed to the knowledge of the truth. This is very dangerous because of pride, unable to ask for assistance. And then, if you win back such a sinner, then you will cover a multitude of sins. Remember, one sin, one, one sin is enough to condemn me or to condemn you to eternal separation from God. Now, if you are able to win a person back, a rowing, you have covered the multitude of sins because the person will repent, confess their sin, and God will forgive them and then cover that multitude of sins that will render them de de dead or separated completely from God eternally. So you will save their soul from death. In that manner. I pray that this journey through the book of James has opened our heart, has revived our faith, and has called us back those who were wandering away from the faith. We are going to pray. Lord, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you for this couple of weeks looking into your, your word opening the scroll from James chapter 1 until James chapter 5. Help us, Lord, to go and be the doers of your word in our daily lives. To revisit the truths, bring them to remembrance in our hearts, in our minds, as we are living this Christian life here. Help us, Lord, to be the lights in the corners where we are, so that your name can be glorified as we decrease and you increase. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.